Hi. Uh, we missed you too. I've had something of an identity crisis. Who was here last week? <laughs> New people, I'm going to address you directly for a moment. Last week was the speakeasy stage and I was locked in the trunk of a car and my alter ego, Doug Graves, showed up to torture all of you. I, it was awful. Wait, I did say heckle the host, so I am going to go mm, positivity pill for you, but good joke, I liked it. Here's the thing, I'm back with a bit of an identity crisis. I've sort of, I took a week off from being me and was still here and I got to see this from your point of view and wow, you are tolerant people. Holy hell, I stood down here and listened to the rules. I wandered around aimlessly. I walked up to best friends of mine and said, how you doing? And they said, who the hell are you? which was even better because it's easy to go off in the world and play a character, but going to where in front of all of your friends and being a character was tough. Tougher still was doing that while everybody else was playing a character too because you guys didn't just show up in costume, you brought your game and I just wanted to shout you guys out for that. Thank you so much. Doug and the gang will make a reappearance. The speak easy, speak easy. wow, the lips are still it was the duct tape. The <laughs> Pimpin' ain't easy, speaking ain't easy. And uh, the speakeasy stage will make a return at some point in the dubious future. In the meantime, I did want to shout out one other person who was standing on the stage very ominously in the back corner. We called him Quiet Eddie all night. He stood there like this. I actually had a friend who is deeply involved in our organization which is still a hard word to say without a gangster accent. But I actually had somebody who has been a part of all of this and all the things we're building who had never been to the show, and he agreed to show up in a suit and mirror shades and, and menace everyone standing three feet behind me the entire evening. It was, it was brilliant, and I wanted to shout out Alan Blakely for doing that for us. He's gonna watch this on YouTube. His, his Mondays are very busy. Alan's actually involved in our education programs. We're actually launching a bunch of like circus academy type stuff next year and he's been gearing up for that. So you're gonna start hearing about him more from week to week and I just wanted to let you know that I was so glad he could, uh, he could join us for an evening. He did tell me a story. We kind of had like an aftermath meeting and he told me about all my weird friends and he was kind of screwed up about that. He told me, we were, we were, and I was explaining to him, I was trying to find myself, and you know, we went through, you know, the show was weird, and this was weird, and that was fun. And then we started telling personal stories to try to like re-find ourselves, because we'd been talking like something off of Miami Vice, unfortunately, for an entire night. And... But you were wearing socks. <laughs> I planned ahead for the possibility of that joke. Just saying. But we got to telling stories to try to re-find our, our character that was ourselves. You know, we'd played someone else and we had stories and history and costumes and weird scars on our face. Then we had to find ourselves. And so he told me how he was attacked and mauled by a tiger. I'm gonna make him come back and tell that story. So make sure you ask him. And I told him about my animal attack story and I would like to share it with you because it helped me find myself. So I'm gonna do that. Here's the deal. I was not always the circus human you see before you. At one point, and I was talking to someone about this earlier this evening, I weighed about 300 pounds, and um, I wore all black, I chain smoked clove cigarettes, I ate fast food, and I hated everybody. So really, other than some Bauhaus music, I was goth. It's true, I know, it's kind of, you look down, you're like, really? But I, it was a long time ago, give me some, give me some credit. So I was standing outside. I went out to a dinner party. Normally, I was a fast food vegetarian. I went outside uh, a restaurant, and I was standing there, glowering, smoking. <sighs> I hate everything. I freaking hate everything. Goth, goth, goth. <laughs> and as luck would have it, the universe saw fit to give me a lesson. And at this point, a goose walked up to me. Yes, like legit, a goose. Not a per and around here, you have to, new people, you have to understand, you have to specify this is not a person in a goose costume, this is a goose. 
So Goose walks up to me. I'm looking at... I'll allow it. I'm going to carry on. I didn't know I would have accompaniment. It's fantastic. I'm feeling more like myself already because I have Foley. It's a superpower. So I'm standing there and I'm looking at the goose and I'm... I hate everything, including that goose. I look at the goose and I think... I know I'm going to screw with the goose. Now, you have to understand, I, I, I was figuring out where the goose had come from. There were some condos, and they had a man-made lake, and they would come into the parking lot and eat, I guess, bread, breadcrumbs, croutons, something, possibly goth kids. I wasn't sure. So I looked at him, and I went like this. And my trench coat flapped out like a chubby John Woo movie behind me. And I'm standing there, and I'm thinking to myself, I think I just gave the international signal for Goose, I'm a badass. Because the goose takes this step sort of running backwards. And runs, and this is the part I hadn't really been aware of, to his friends. You see, I didn't, it wasn't one goose, it was like a, a, a gaggle. I looked it up on the internet while I was putting on my socks. So I'm, I'm watching this, and I, and I can almost translate, like Google Goose Translate. I, I'm almost a capable of knowing what's going through their minds. He runs up and goes, Bob, 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 big scary wolf, big scary wolf, big scary wolf. <laughs> Bob looks at him, looks at me, looks at him and says, I have a plan. I need you to trust me. Can you trust me? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Bob takes a step back. Bob hauls back his webbed foot and plants it into the derriere, the down-covered derriere of his nervous friend, launching him about five feet forward in front of his friends. He hits the ground with a resounding honk. Let me hear a demo. Well, you see, all of his friends misunderstood the situation. You now know what happened. He, he got kicked. But his friends saw him run back and say, I think if we work together, we can take him. <laughs> okay, punt. <laughs> it is at this moment I learned a couple of life lessons I wanted to share with you. <laughs> Number one, without question, fat goth kids can run. <laughs> Number two, without question, one guy with an idea means nothing. One goose who goes, I think we can do something is nothing. It is the guy who gives him a little push towards greatness that makes his 80 friends decide to give chase over the wall. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the open stage, the only place I have ever been that will kick you butt first into the limelight. <laughs> <laughs>